Um, okay, Eric, well, thanks for joining us. I see that we've got, uh, what, three pieces of equipment out here on the table? Uh, what are we looking at? Well, Derek, we've got our basically our L1 system. Okay. So this is basically our low force stuff. Um, we have two different uh, force gauge models. Okay. Three different models of standard height test stands. And then we also have the extended that you see over here. Anything with an X is an extended. And, and by different models, I'm assuming just different frame sizes? Is that? Okay. Different capacities. Different capacities, okay. So it's All either right. different travel or different capacities. So okay. 110 model, 330 or 550. Right here we've got an L1 system, which is basically running off of the load cell in a tablet. Okay. Or we have the standalone, which is right over in front of you. That basically, you can drive the system up and down by pressing the buttons, and it just goes at a controlled speed whenever you want it to do. Okay. So as soon as you let off the buttons, it stops. Or you can do something very unique, industry first. Okay. In our DFC model, it is a controller. So in what that means is the force gauge firmware only controls the test stand. And There's when you no say software or computer hooked up to it, it's the force gauge doing everything. So when you say when you say industry first, you mean it's it's the first to be able to be both a, a standalone gauge and a controller. Well, it's the first to be a standalone and a controller, but controlling it via firmware only. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. So that's that was the the big challenge there. Doing and that it. was that's important for like the the medical device industries where software Correct. becomes kind of a bug the validation gets yeah, a little right, right, sticky right. there, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. And, and costly. Okay. Uh, let's take a closer look at this. Uh, if we can go over here to the gauge cam. Um, several things uh, I want to point out. Uh, one of the first things I noticed when you brought this in is uh, here where you were, here where you put in put on your attachments. I noticed that uh, where you put them on, this has got flats on it. What are what are those? Uh, what's the purpose of that? Well, we found that in the past there's a lot of load cells gets damaged by people putting on different grips and adapters and okay. stuff like that, and they tend to over tighten them. So this uh, allows okay. you to put a wrench on there to tighten it up so you don't torque your load cell. Oh, so rather it. than you put it on there and just <laughs> crank yeah. it, you would put a backing wrench on it and Correct, tighten it. And, and tighten then, it up. And, and not, okay, not mess things up. Um, you know, I was playing with this earlier. I, I want to point out to people, this is actually uh, very ergonomic. Um, uh, you got a nice little little grip here. Uh, some of these are like holding a brick. Brick, yeah. Uh, and this, you got a nice little handle. Uh, fits, you know, I think most people would feel comfortable holding this. Not too heavy, it's balanced, feels good. That was one of the main objectives is it's going to be a hand gauge, make a bigger <laughs> hand, you know, so yeah. instead of trying to carry a yeah, brick. Yeah. So yeah. that was one of the things we looked at. It's easy, it's comfortable to use all day long. Um, and, you know, it, it, it definitely feels balanced in your hand. It's not top heavy where you're trying to, to hold it. Right. And all the, uh, uh, I, uh, all the push buttons, I mean, I'm not an expert at using these, but I kind of understand how they work. Uh, this button over here looks like it allows me to uh, adjust my... Um, my units, so I saw newtons, uh, gram force, uh, kilogram force, pound force, newtons. Let's go back to pound force here. Uh, so you have the two keys that are pointing to the arrows to the outside, pointing away. Okay. Those are both programmable. That means you can select them to do whatever you want them to do. Okay. Um, you know, either doing units, could be start, stop, could be transmit. It could be anything that you want it to do okay. on those two buttons in whatever configuration the force gauge is in. So if you're in the force gauge controller mode, that would be your start button, and the other one may be return, or it may be transmit, or whatever you want it to be. Okay. You can program those keys to do it. Now, I notice that take a measurement, like right now, it looks like the arrow pointing down means this is a compression measurement, right? right? Uh, peak compression. Okay. So if you noticed, when you push down on the, the uh, little hook there, okay. it freezes the display whenever you let go. Oh, now, okay. it's showing you what your maximum force was when you're doing it. You hit the zero button, zeroes it. Okay. Do it um, again. Do it okay. again. So right. it's fairly easy to use. I mean, it's not really over complicated. Okay. Uh, if you hit the arrow button that you were just hitting again, you'll notice now it'll put it in tension. Oh, okay. Opposite direction. And now direction. when you pull it, okay. it does the opposite direction oh, and freezes okay. it. Yeah. We also have average mode in there in real time. Okay. Now I noticed on the back, uh, there's a like something with a with a hole in it. I mean, what's what's that for? Right. So basically, all the load that's our, our basically where a load pin. Okay. And if you noticed up on the frame on the FMM here, you'll see a little pin on the oh, adapter on the, block. On the, on the, okay. Uh -huh. So that just goes inside the... It goes inside the okay. hole, and then now, oh, basically all the, the load... We have to go the other way, I'm assuming. Correct. Okay, correct. all right, right. So all the load's going through that pin. So we have four little screws that hold the onto the mounting block. Okay. 
and you're ready to go. Uh, I noticed the display's upside down. I'm assuming that can be flipped over. Okay. Just go right. into settings, flip the display, and okay. now you're ready to go. So now this basically is the smarts for a dumb stand. Correct. Right. This, the stand is just a motor, all essentially, your, right? right? All okay. your load, um, PID, everything, is, it's programming through the gauge itself. So you want to set your speed or whatever, you set it in the force gauge and, and okay. away you go. And Bluetooth communication? Yep. Bluetooth okay. out to 30 feet. So you put it, hook it up to the RS-232 mode and plug it in the back of the stand and okay. put the gauge in test mode and you're ready to go. Uh, basically, battery operated uh, storage, you can store how, how many measurements? A store 100. Right? 100, okay. And obviously you could be downloading the measurements as you go anyway. Uh, if you wanted to, Bluetooth or stay them in the gauge, okay. and, you know, for transmitting later. Okay. Um, I know there's some other software functions you want to show us, and, and rather than try to do it with the camera pointing at the display here, uh, you have a simulator that we can run and we'll just talk over the... Correct. Let's okay. So now we're in the simulator. Uh, this is our Starrett software simulator for the force gauges. You can do either DFC or DFG. We're doing the DFC on this one the battery indicator, your force directions, and all the other stuff. But if you come down to the menu button, you can see it's very, very simple to look at the different things that you can do, real-time modes or units or whatever. But if you scroll around using these keys, just to flip the display, how easy it, it is to flip the display is just basically navigate through, come down to where it says flip display, and hit flip and then just back out. So oh, okay. you can see real quick, I'm just going to flip it and then flip it back to show you. So now it's obviously flipped, right? Oh, okay, right, right. So now we can go in and scroll through and flip it back. So not very difficult to do. Obviously, you're not going to be doing this all the time. Uh, once you flip the display, you're, you're going to basically stay in that mode because it'll be hooked up to the stand and stuff like that. So you can okay. see how easy it was to flip and flip back. Right. Also in the simulator, it allows you to apply a load. So if you notice down here, there's a little green bar. Right. And as I apply a load to either direction, now I've applied the load, and when I come back, you can see, as I drag it back, you can see that these little anchors down here kind of stay and tell you where it is. So oh. you can see on the compression side, it's actually frozen at that peak one. Okay. Again, I can do it again just by resetting it and hitting the, the load over now here. Now, I'm assuming you can set, uh, you can also set uh, like test limits if you wanted to set this up to do go, no go, right? You can go, do go no go. Okay. All those are done by literally hitting the menu, going it in, turning your tolerances oh, okay. on and off. All right. So you can have your limit one, limit two, so you can do that. You can have it beep. Okay. So many, many, many things you can do in this software or the firmware that's in here. Uh, okay, so, th so thanks. That was much easier on the simulator. Yeah. Um, so again, this is the, the, the DFC and the DFG. Are our force gauges. Uh, force gauges. Uh, so the DFC is if it's functioning as a controller, DFG if it's... Just a basic gauge. Basic. And, and, and you, do you buy them separately that way or yeah. you buy it as a DFC or a DFG? Either or, or, DFD or DFC, and then we have the different capacities. So okay. that's how the gauges are bought off of the size of the capacity in the model. Okay, terrific. Well, thanks, Eric. Appreciate Thank that. You.